Hiya, just a quick one today. Um, I've got a job on the go, but some of you may know and some of you may not. I've had another operation on my hand, another carpal tunnel, and I'm trying to keep it clean because it's uh, still a bit sore. And I think I'm overdoing it a little bit, so I've packed it in for the afternoon, and I'm just going to do a quick little job. Something I saw on Nigel Barnett's website, at French and Forge. I'll put the link to his site in, and his website in the description. But he made, no, he didn't make, well he did, but he, in one of his videos, there was a, a three-armed square. Now, you may wonder what that is, and I'm just gonna show you. Um, and it, I just saw it and I thought, what a useful tool. I, why haven't I made one of these years ago? So I'm just gonna make one, it's very simple. Um, so let's crack on, cut off some steel, and get on with it. Okay, so basically what this uh, tool is for, if you've got something round and you want to divide it up equally into three, if you're making something with three legs, which a lot of things uh, in the blacksmith shop do have, um, this simple little tool can uh, mark out where uh, things need to go. So what we're going to start with, I've got three bits of 25 by 3 inch eighth because this thing doesn't need to be particularly strong uh, it's just it's just a, like a ruler uh, a gauge a guide so got three bits of that I'm just going to mark out on the bench so I know what basically what I'm what I'm doing so gonna make some noise more noise I'm just going to mark a circle, doesn't matter what size. Just so that I've got a centre point to work from. Right, you can't actually see this, so I'm just going to pencil it in. There's the centre. And then I'll just mark doesn't really matter if you can't see it but the point is you're watching a video if you can't see what's going on as I said at the beginning I've had this fourth carpal tunnel operation it was a knock-on effect from my rotator cuff surgery which I had nine months ago, would you believe? It's still not 100% bright, but we're getting there. I had the carpal tunnel done a fortnight ago, and I'm getting back a bit, a bit soon, I think, really. But anyway, that's better. You can see what's going on now. So now I want to divide that up into three, and it's pretty simple to do. It's obviously 120 degrees. As I don't have a protractor or anything, I'm just going to use my, um, whatever you call this thing, one of the most useful tools you, in the shop. Uh, all right, let's set that as close to 120 as I can get. And I don't think you can get much closer than that. Oh, 119.9, it was 120 a second ago. There we go, 120, well, near enough. So I'm just going to set that anywhere on that centre dot. Inscribe a line at the angle. And then move it round, go from... Everything's in the way. Go from there. Oh, right. right, so that's roughly it. So this doesn't have to be like exact, exact, because it, it, it's just a guide. 
it's an idea. It's to get you bloody sight closer than it would be guessing it or doing lots of maths to, to work it out. Right, and obviously we've got 120 there, so half of that is going to be 60. So we want to cut the end of the bars at 30 degrees each side. So, find a odd length. Just mark up the middle of the bar. Same on this one. And where's the other one gone? It fell off onto the floor. Same on this one. Right. So let's go and set up the saw and cut 30 degrees on each corner of them. set up the angle and I'll set up this little stop so hopefully it will cut in the middle pretty good to me let's do the other two I think my suds has just about run out. Need to top it up with some water, eh? Well, there you go. Three of them. Okay, so let's see if it has worked. Well, pretty damn good as far as I can tell. 
Could have actually made them a bit shorter, 18 inches. I think it's going to be quite a big, big thing, but not often you make things that big. But it's sod's law. If you make it 12 inches, you'll want to make 18 inches. So we'll leave it at that. That's pretty good. So what I shall do is I'll put a little bit of a chamfer on them. And we'll tack them up. But before I do that, I want to put some graduations on here so I know what diameter we're working with. So I'm going to get my rule out and see if I can just transfer some on there and then punch them in. So let's see if we can sort that out. All right, I'm going to do half inches as well. I'm going to start with half, one, one and a half. Again, it's just, I'm not trying to be super accurate. You know, this is a blacksmith shop, not an engineer's shop, so I'm not worried horrendously. I just want an idea, you know, if I want something roughly eight inches round, or roughly ten inches, whatever, it's, just give me a guide. Lovely old brass rule. Came out of my father's hardware shop that he had. It was one of those that was screwed to the bench. If he wanted to measure out cord or pipe or tube or anything. Right, that's that. So now I'll transfer them to all three of them and then we'll get them over on the anvil and give them a punch. Okay, so I'm going to centre punch the, half, uh, the inches and then I'm just going to put a little chisel mark on the half inches. So I'm just going to go just back from the edge. So, second one. Miss. Right, and then just gonna put a little nick on the edge for the half inch ones. Right, you can see that. Very well. Once that's all cleaned up and it's been painted or whatever, or covered in rust, at least I'll be able to see roughly my marks. I might even put numbers on them, but at the moment I'm just going to, at least on one arm, I'm just going to, at the moment, just leave them just like that. So just going to crack on and do the others. Okay, so I decided I would put the numbers on. Um, I've just done that, but as you can see, my dyslexia kicked in on the three. Got that the wrong way around, so I had to weld it up and do it again. But uh, so that's all done on one arm. Now we're going to put it together and see if it works. Right, I hope you better hear me because there's lots going on at the moment. There's sprayers going on in the fields and all sorts. So anyway, I've laid it out um, with the help of my magnets to hold it still. I'm just going to put a tack in the middle and check the angles then weld her up on the screen. Hang on, we've got no other. There we have. Get my 
thing that I had a minute ago. Let's see if it tallies. Okay, so the answer is no, it doesn't tally. So they are out quite a few degrees. So what I'm going to do, so I've broken the tack off in the middle and I'm going to try and hold it up against my machine at the right angle, put a little tack on it and then do the same for the others. So let's see what we can do here. This is nowhere near at the moment, 18, 19. Right, that's spot on 120 there. So, try and put a little tack on there. Hope it stays where it's put. Ah. Oh, bloody earth. Oh yes, that's got it. I'm just going to weld it up now. A few more tacks on it. We'll check it again. Make sure. So it's not 100%, but. I want it as close as I can get it. That one wants moving, let's just give it a tap on the angle. that's close enough for me so I'm going to turn it over weld it up grind it up drill a hole in the middle so that we know where the center is each time um, and there you go so let's get, get that done then we'll clean her up and hang it on the wall and that's probably where it will stay right I just want to check it again after I've welded it and cleaned it up Spot on. Happy with that. So, just going to drill a hole in it in the middle so that I can locate things on it or locate it on things. And uh, I'll put a hole in one of the ends, perhaps give it a coat, quick coat of primer, hang it on the wall as an ornament.
Right, before I hang it on the wall, I just want to check out and see what sort of uh, thing I could have used it for. Now, years ago, I made a load of these things. I don't know if you can see it, it's basically three arms and a crocodile clip. I'll give you a second to try and guess what it was for. No? Okay, I'll tell you. Um, it was for filling up buckets of water, basically. Simple as that. The amount of times when I was shearing horses, I'd go into a yard, someone would put a hose pipe in a bucket of water, walk away to do something else, and the hose pipe would just fly out. The yard would be full of water and the bucket would be half empty. So I made a load of these. You just simply drop that on the top of the bucket, click your hose in there, walk away. And it fills the bucket up with no fear of the hose flying out. Anyway, that's beside the point. This is the sort of job it would have been useful for. And then actually you can see it's, it's not far out, but it is out. If I had one of these tools, it would have been damn so easy to make these. So there you go, that's what they're for. So I'm just going to give it a quick clean up and a uh, quick lick of paint. See what we've done. All right, so there it is. Very, very simple tool, but a very, very useful one. I don't know if it's actually focusing, but you get the idea. So I shall hang that on the wall. And sooner or later, that will be very, very useful. So with thanks to Nigel at French and Forge for the idea. Thanks, Nigel.